Hi folks, it's uh, Steve here from Analytics in Action. What I want to do today is give you a um, demo on how to use lift charts uh, to evaluate uh, data mining models in SQL Server 2008. Um, lift charts are also known as accuracy or gains charts and they're really handy in that they allow you to um, first of all compare um, different models, so compare a say a, a neural network to a decision tree, but they also allow you to evaluate how strong a particular model is as well. So very very handy um, tool for um, uh, for for analysts. Um, what this um, video does it also builds on a previous um, previous um, demo that I did on YouTube. Um, in which I created a couple of data mining models. So if you have done, uh, if you want to actually uh, use, if you basically want to create and test the same models that I'm using, jump across and have a look at this um, this demo. I've also got the um, the raw data that I used to create those models there. So that's take. I think that demo is about 10 or 12 minutes, so it's fairly quick to do. Um, so essentially, what we're going to do today is build on those. Um, Evaluate, sorry, the um, the two data mining models, the decision tree and the neural network that we created in that in that last demo. So, um, what uh, what I'm going to do is I'm assume that you've got the um, data mining add-in for um, SQL Server installed, um, and within the data mining tab, you will see the accuracy chart um, icon. So select on that and uh, click through the first um, window. And what you'll see uh, are a couple of things here. You'll see the two models that, um, or the models that you created. So in my uh, situation, I created a decision tree and a neural network. And you'll also see the data mining structure. And the data mining structure is called the marketing, um, and it's called marketing model. Um, if you select the data mining structure, um, you'll basically evaluate all of the models within that, um, that structure. So in this case, the... Um, the models base, uh, predicted whether a customer were built to predict whether a customer is likely to attend a marketing event. So the idea was that, you know, if you if you understand the profile of customers likely to attend uh, an event in say subsequent years, you can uh, refine your marketing to uh, make it much more efficient. And so you can just perhaps do mail outs to just the ones that are more likely to return and uh, to attend the event, and it then becomes much more efficient and you uh, potentially make more money out. Those sort of events. Um, so, as mentioned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on the data mining structure to compare both models. And you just click next. What we want to do, um, as mentioned before, is predict customers that are likely to attend a marketing event. So, the column is planned to attend a marketing event, and we've got sort of like a yes or no um, um, choice here. So, we want to actually select yes, they plan to attend. To click next. This uh, next tab basically identifies where we're going to pull the uh, test data from. Um, so the test data is the 30% um, of data we held out or held back when we built the model. So, so we built the model using 70% of the 8,000 rows of data, and we're going to test it using the 30%, uh, the, the remaining 30%. You can pull data in from either external sources or use a uh, define actually a subset of that data, but we're not going to do that today. And then you just click finish and the model will be created fairly quickly. I'm just going to shrink this down so it's a reasonable reasonable size. And what we'll see is um, we end up with four lines on the uh, chart. So we've got a ideal model, a no model, which is essentially like a random guess model, and then we've got the um, decision tree and the neural network um, here. First thing you sort of notice is that the neural network and decision tree are very, very similar shape, and that means the effectiveness of the models, the two models, are very, very similar. Um, but I'll start with sort of explaining the whole concept of lift charts using the ideal model. So essentially, what it says is that if we sort of draw a line up from the overall percentage of population, it says that the ideal model, if it could perfectly predict the profile of customers that are likely to attend the event, you'd only actually have to contact about 30% of the customers to get all of the customers that are likely to attend the event. Um, and the next, um, obviously, when you then look at, say, the, um, the uh, two models we created, um, if you contacted, say, uh, the, with the effectiveness of those models, if you contacted a similar proportion, you would only get about 
say 70 to 75 percent of the customers that likely attend. That's actually, um, when I say only, probably not the best way to say it because that's actually a, a pretty powerful looking model because it is fairly close to the optimal, uh, to the ideal model. It's when the model sort of hover just above the uh, the no model or the random guess line, you um, you have to go back and look at your data data set and say, you know, is that, or basically it tells you that there's very little predictive value within your model uh, and you need to go out there and have another look at it and see if you can pull in different variables, different predictors within the model. So that's essentially lift charts. Um, so if you um, sort of found this uh, stuff useful, um, it might be worth uh, either subscribing to my uh, to my YouTube channel. So you just click this button, you'll get notified with new, when I uh, produce new videos, and that's probably every one to two weeks. So try and do that on a fairly regular basis. The other um, thing that you find, might find is useful, uh, that's useful, is to come across and actually have a look at um, my website called Analytics in Action. I have stacks and stacks of information on SQL Server and predictive modeling within SQL Server. Um, also have a stack of stuff on SQL Server integration services. And particularly if you're interested in, in modeling, um, integration services is a really handy tool because typically it, about 80% of most of the time in data mining projects is actually linked to um, data preparation and data integration and uh, so integration services is a great tool for actually streamlining and making that um, process of the integration of data much more efficient. So um, definitely go across and have a look at that and I hope you found today's demo useful.